Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a video in my eyeshadow palette month, and today we are talking about what I consider to be the best packaging. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be all about the best packaging for eyeshadow palettes. I think I saw Betty Jean do this from uh, Betty Bean. Uh, from that channel and I thought oh that's a lovely concept I love doing this and I really feel now that I've like put the eyeshadow palettes together that I consider to have be like best packaging um, my preferences have really really changed so I'll get into that a little bit first and then we will get to the 10 sorts of eyeshadow palette packaging that I really really love and adore in case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I love coming on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. Because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I deem myself a snow angel. If you would like to join the snow angel club, hit subscribe down below, and then join my little family on here. So yeah, eyeshadow palette packaging. I was like, but a couple of years ago, I was all about like the bigger, the better, the most extravagant, like, who remembers those boxes that Urban Decay used to do? Like, I believe one of those, what's it called? The, what were they called again? I have the Alice in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass collection, uh, that limited edition eyeshadow palette that was styled in a similar way, but they, they had this series where every Christmas they had this limited edition uh, eyeshadow palette that came in a box with a drawer and I believe the final one they did in like the normal line even had like a screen inside it that would play a video or something like that and it had like a pop-up like the Game of Thrones palette was a little bit styled a little bit like that oh what were they what were they called again anywho it doesn't really matter but yeah then you have the vice palettes which were also quite bulky um, so I feel like we've really come a long way when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. I think like the only bulky packaging that I still quite enjoy is by Pat McGrath. But I didn't select any of my Pat McGrath palettes in here because I find it so cumbersome. So everything I've got here is either really clever because like colors correspond to what's inside it, because it has a pretty design, or because it's just incredibly practical. <laughs> I'm just, I think that that's really where my makeup tastes have been going. I don't really love super bulky packaging. I just, I think I love just having really plain, simple packaging that just, you know, gets the job done. That's, I think, why I wanted to sort of sit down and film this video and show you those things. Sure, sometimes things are just like cute or whatever, but I think that these kind of things show you what my tastes are. Do I still love some of those bigger, bulky, like, pack, like, style packaging from palettes that I've, you know, bought in the past? Sure. Do I love the luxury experience of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, where it's like the box with the really heavy Judy palette and the beveled mirror inside it? Yes, I do. But, truth be told, I buy makeup to use it mainly, and yes, I try out a lot for the channel, so I just want a palette that it's like, you know, quick and easy to use, and I don't want like a horrible amount of shades, I want it to be nice and curated, and I think that actually looking at everything here, this is like, if I were to ever design a palette, it would kind of look like any of these, <laughs> so yeah. That's what we've got going on in today's video. Let me just show you what I love about some eyeshadow palette packaging. And we're gonna start with the itty bitty things first. Natasha Denona mini palettes. I mean, I can only also show you the budget variety of this because we have some Catrice palettes that look, look at this, hold on. They're the same. So <laughs> Catrice five in a box. Natasha Denona mini palettes. I mean, if you're giving me a small curated color story, make it something like this. This is really, really cute, but still very easy to manage. Yes, they are cheap, uh, like plastic packaging, but there's still something really classy about it, especially the Natasha Denona ones. They definitely feel like better quality than the Catrice ones. I like how it opens up completely flat so you can really lay it down on your makeup table, but there's still enough space to give you some variety in the color story. Um, I feel like with four shades, I very often feel it's like, one look in a palette, but with these, it's like it really hits that sweet spot. 
you know, you just get enough shades to do it. And the Natasha Denona mini palettes are especially good at giving you still some variation, even though you only get five shades, which I think I think is a really good like achievement here. I also have the mini Zendo, but that's currently in my shop, my stash, and I don't want to like pull it out and forget to put it back. Um, but yeah, Natasha Denona mini, I love. Another great way that I love the way the palette is laid out, but also the packaging it comes in, are the ColourPop cardboard nine pans. So this is the That's Taupe. I love, I mean, it's got a magnet, so it closes shut just fine, but the pa like the cardboard doesn't make it too heavy. It's nice and slim, and we get nine shades inside it. Plus, these are magnetic, so you can pull them out, and you can rearrange them and customize your palettes if you have a few of these, or pop them out and put them in a singles palette, which is actually what I've been doing a lot, like my ColourPop palettes. I have quite a few, but I've been fusing them together. I've been rearranging color stories, keeping only the shades I love. And I just love that you can have a play around with these. So yeah, the ColourPop cardboard packaging, maybe not the most aesthetic, but they do a couple of really fun ones like this one. I like the snake print it has. That cherry palette was a lot of fun. So I think that this is better packaging than the plastic that the um, the original like monochromatic palettes used to come in. Uh, this is really nice, easy to carry around, sturdy enough. I also like it in the 12 pen version, something like the Flutter, Flutter By um, th that I have as well. So yeah, these cardboard uh, packaging from ColourPop I think is just the easiest to use. Very practical. The magnet makes it easy for you to swap things around so you can have a little bit more control about what the color story looks like. I love it. And another reason for like, uh, then another pick for like practicality, Zoeva eyeshadow palettes. I have loved how slim Zoeva palettes are. Now this is one of the newer ones and I feel it's a little bit thicker than the old ones. This is the Together We Grow, but here we get 10 shades. This does also come with a mirror, which is nice. It's nice and shiny, so it makes it look a little bit more luxurious. And then you get like 10 shades. And in here we get five mattes and five shimmers. And the way this is just laid out, you can do a look with every single pairing. You can do a look with every single row. And you can do looks with every single quad that you get in here, or this with this, and you will get a perfect look. So I love it when we get eyeshadow palettes that are just so foolproof that they kind of spell it out for you but it's still a very workable palette. It's easy to carry around. This feels a little heavier than the ColourPop does, but this is still very easy to manage. You can pop it into a makeup bag. It again has the magnetic closure, which I love, like nothing to get your nails stuck in or something that's impossible to open. And because you do get that mirror, you can carry it around on the go. And this also, this line actually also comes with mini six pans and then it's more like a travel size palette. So you can also, if this is too many shades for you, you can also opt for the smaller option, which I think is a very clever thing to do from Zoeva. So if you love the palette, but you find it too big, you can buy the mini one for travel, or if you just feel you don't want such a big palette, you can also buy the small version. So Zoeva has been doing really good eyeshadow palette uh, packaging for, well, as long as they've been doing eyeshadow palettes, really, I love it. And that's why I had to mention them here. I just mentioned how I love it when a eyeshadow palette spells it out for you. And the pick that I've shown many times on this, uh, on this channel that does that, Tartlet in Bloom. Tartlet palettes seem to be going in and out of like popularity for like, like sometimes they are very hyped up and then like the, the hype dies down again, but then they seem to pop back up. I feel that new full bloom palette, like the really big one, is the thing that really also put these smaller ones back on the map. I don't have the large one because I already have three of the Tartlet palettes, so I don't really feel I need the big one. I did almost buy it <laughs> when I was in Paris, but then I was like, Micah, this is far too big for you. I don't love really big palettes because it's just annoying to store and put on your makeup vanity. And I'm sure if you're a makeup artist who needs to have a lot of colors available because they need to go from person to person, then these really big palettes are great. But for me, I really don't need it. So that's why this, 12 pans, nicely curated. Again, a mirror here. It does have the snap, which, 
I don't love, but it's easy to open. It doesn't like open, like sometimes with these like snap style palettes, it get like you need to get your nail in to open it. Or like another thing that's like a little sturdier than your nail sometimes, because I've broken a nail trying to open sleek palettes for years. <laughs> <laughs> like sleek palettes were really nice like packaging really nice slims tiny but you still got 10 shades but I broke a lot of nails trying to open them the blushes were even worse but yeah this is 12 shades and not only do we get different undertones we get warm neutral and cool we also have a look in each row I love it. It was sort of like between this and the Persona Identity palette because the Identity palette also has that where it's got like the different undertones and you can just stick to the quads and like pick one of the darker shades at the bottom and it like does it for you. It has similar style packaging to this actually. So they're the same size. They sit side by side in my makeup collection. But yeah, this is again, you know, nicely curated, slim packaging. Maybe we didn't need all of these dark shades, but now you know that these all have different undertones. Just see that you just you just get everything you need. Each row has a shimmer. You get enough mattes. Love it. Then another very practical style of packaging that I just love. Natasha Denona Midi palettes. The larger palettes I don't love. I don't love how squishy they are. And I just feel there's a lot of wasted space. And then they also have that like plastic overlay. I actually feel this feels more luxurious than the bigger palettes that are twice the price of this. Am I the only one? I believe they have changed the larger palettes since then. Like the triachrome palette, didn't they also come in plastic? But I have the gold and the lila and they still come in the squishy packaging, which I don't love. But this is the mini or... No, this is the midi retro and you get 15 shades. Again, no space wasted. We get a mirror. It is snap. So, but it has like good enough hinges that it stays closed. But what I love about this, like the color pop is that you can pop them out. So again, Natasha Denona palettes, safe for the minis. You can pop your shades out quite easily. This works with a pin. The uh, larger palettes, the $129 ones, you can actually take are $113. I never know. The largest ones that are the most expensive, you can take a magnet and pull them out. But with this, you just need to pop a pin in the back and you can pop these out, rearrange a color story, put, put them in a singles palette. Again, a really nice curated color story in here that just gives you everything. And the outer outside packaging of this matches the inside, which I love as well. So this is again very practical practical for something that's a little bit bigger, but again, nice and slim, easy to store. This is what I want every single eyeshadow palette to be. But I do appreciate it if it's got a fun detail in the design. However, I feel there just aren't that many good palettes that really have a fun design, unless it's like an indie palette, but I have this guy from LA Colors. And even if I were to ever declutter this for my makeup collection, I would never get rid of this. This is the sleeve. It's the classic horror. I'm not sure if you can still buy this, but look at this. It's got zombie ladies. Not only on the front, which is what most palettes would do, also on the back. It's slim. It's got the magnet. Oh, it's got everything I love. And then it has a mirror with the um, ladies being continued on the inside. And then we get, ooh, it's got a lot of fallout here from the last time I've used it, but then it, it's got holographic. Can we, like, and then the color story is really fun too. It is a rainbow, but it is a murky rainbow. Like all of these shades have a bit of a grungy undertone, which is why it has survived in my collection all these years. Classic horror from LA Splash. Like people, can we like do more of this? Like, can we like, I hope so. And then I think a palette that, again, for just the packaging alone and the way it is laid out, it would win prizes in its design. This is the Kat Von D, at the time it was still called Kat Von D, now KVD Beauty. This is the Monarch palette. So this is very old. I no longer use this. I've decluttered this for my collection, but I've kept it around because of that butterfly design. So it has these like skulls in it, super nice details. And then it also has like the shades on the back with some more detailing here. Then we get a mirror, we get the magnet. 
and it is again quite a slim design. Can you tell what I like? And then we have those shades. Now this granted a bit big, a bit big. I would have loved it if these were like the same size as those. Pet peeve, pet peeve. But I love again how this is curated. You get a look here, you get a look here, you get a look here, you can mix and match. It, I mean, it's again very clever the way this has been laid out and it's got one of my favorite rose gold shades of all time. This, this palette made me realize how much I love rose gold. I remember when this came out, everybody was about going on about that orange shade. This was, I think this may actually be the palette that instigated the orange tone craze of like 2016. Like this is the palette. This is the, this is the root, <laughs> the root cause I think. But yeah, this is a stunning palette. It was really lovely. You got warm tones, neutrals, some cool tones. It did everything. And I, I wish we got more palettes like this again. But yeah, the palette itself was also stunning. And then I have a spe special category here at the end where I would like to very much focus on eyeshadow palette packaging that goes with the color story that's inside it. So we've already found out if it's slim, if it's got a magnet, if it's got a mirror, I'm happy. The new Anastasia Nouveau palette. It isn't just gorgeous with this like textured, like fabric-like, but it's not actual fabric, which I think is great because the original ABH palettes had the velvet, which once dirty, you can't clean. So I really feel that this is something that's easier to manage, which I like. But then you also got plenty of greens in here to go with the outer packaging. I believe like this shade and this shade here and these two shades, like it looks like the outer packaging is actually represented on the inside of the palette. Whereas sometimes you can feel misled, mis misled by the packaging of your palette because then you find it, you open it and you're like, well, it looked very exciting on the outside, but what's going on in the inside isn't all that great. But with this one, I feel we get a nice representation of what the palette looks like. Like the gold represents the warm tones, the green, the more cool tones and the greens we get in here. And we get one, two, three, four actual green tones on me when I swatched this gray shade. It also seemed to have a bit of a green undertone. So I would count that as a green. It's more like a blue, green, brown sort of shade. Um, we do get the lavender in here. This is quite warm tone. This is quite warm tone and this. But yeah, it's a nice mix of warm and cool, which is also what the palette represents. And I love it. But I think one of the best, best, eyeshadow palettes that has ever done this, which you can no longer buy, Menagerie Feral. So you see the wolf with all the fairies and like the green and like the yellow of the, of the design or the gold, I should say. Um, all the shades that you see in this packaging, guess what? It's in there. So this teal is in the eyes of the wolves and the clothing of one of the fairies. Uh, all of these shades are somehow in the front. Again, we get the really slim packaging, we get the magnet, we get the mirror. This is a very heavy palette, and like ColourPop and Natasha Denona, these can be popped out and you can mix and match Menagerie singles if you'd like to. So if you have a couple of their palettes, uh, you can actually sort of customize your own, um, your own palette for sure. So yeah, this, it's absolutely stunning, very clever. It's one of my favorite colorful eyeshadow palettes because again, you get neutrals, so you can tone things down if you'd like to. You can go full on green, you can go like pinks and reds, you can juxtapose things with the purple and the blue. It's got so many options without it being a rainbow, without it being boring and only being a bunch of mid-tones. I don't understand why they ever de like discontinued this, but this has been discontinued, sadly. But the king of all things, great packaging that not only has slim curated eyeshadow palettes with mirrors, magnets, easy to store, but that also, also on top of it, includes the sort of color story on the front of the palettes, Nabla. Nabla does a really good job at this actually. So the cutie palettes, six pans, really nice and curated perhaps a little bit thick. This could have been like a hair thinner, I think. We get the name across the top, so if you sit them in your drawer like that, 
You can actually read what it is, which I also appreciate. And the front is what we get inside. I mean, if these had also been like removable pants, it would have been even better. But come on, what's not to love about it? I just love it. And with the larger pellets, they do this too. Not in the sleeve, but if you pull it away. So this is the Soul Blooming. This was discontinued. But all of these shades are in this palette. We get the... Wait, there's a couple of the flowers on here. So you get the periwinkles. You get the peachy, pinky shades. I mean, it's genius. It's genius. So I wish more brands would do this where you can just really see what you're buying. I just think that that's very clever. And then lastly, I have the secret palette, which again, the sleeve is a bit more boring than the actual palette itself. And again, like with the other palettes, what you see here represents what's on the inside. We get the warm tone neutrals from the bottom range. We get the berry tones from the top row, but there's also, I'm not sure if you can see, but there it's got like these green, little leaves, like dots of green. And that's what you get in here. Berries, warm tone neutrals, pop of green. I mean, it's amazing. And I think I've done two videos so far where I explained what a eyeshadow palette would look like if I were to design it. And in the first one, I picked this packaging as like representing the kind of packaging I would want. This is 15 pans, but Oh, it's actually the same size. It's the same size as the Natasha Denona Retro. Yeah, it's 15 pans and it's not overly big. You still get decent sized pans that you can still stick your brush in. I mean, come on. It just doesn't get any better than this. So yeah, this was a video that was a little bit differently from what I usually do. Maybe I can do like a part two at some point and show you like the very bougie packaging that I think is less practical because I think everything here has in common that it's got slim packaging design, a mirror, and a magnet closure. That's like, that's like, <laughs> that's like the running theme today, but I'm pretty sure I can do like a video with like some of my Pat McGrath stuff on like the really like bougie, like out there packaging. I can do that too. So let me know if that's something you would like to, uh, like me to do a video on where it's more about the aesthetics rather than the practical practicality of it. I think that's that's a good idea as well. So let me know if that's something you're interested in. Thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more by me. We're still in the midst of doing eyeshadow palette month, so I've got lots more content coming your way, including extra videos every single week, and I'm running a giveaway at the moment, so definitely check out that. And then I hope you would like to stay tuned for more, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care, everybody. Have a good day. Bye!